Hey everyone, welcome back to another devlog. Before I start, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported my project so far. Whether that's just leaving a comment or a suggestion, or even just liking the video. And we are almost hitting 100 subs, which is absolutely unreal. I never thought we would even get close to that. If you think I should do something for 100 subs, let me know in the comments and I might do it. So the first thing that I did this week was I worked on getting the ant to rotate depending on the angle of the ground. I managed to get it working smoothly, but not before I had some interesting movements. Uh, so instead of showing you boring code, I'm going to explain how it works with my artistic skills. So as you can see here, we have our ant and we have the ground. We first start by sending a straight raycast straight down to the ground. And from this collision with the ground, we can determine the normal angle of the ground. A few cross products and a slurp later, we have our rotation. And voila! We have a character now rotating depending on the angle of the ground. This totally didn't take days of coding, just to be replaced by a couple lines of code. Anyways, I'm pretty happy with how this looks, and I think it makes the ant feel a little bit more alive than just having it static, as well as it fixes the issue of having the ant's head stick into a wall every single time it climbs up a slope. And speaking of slopes, you can now slide down them. I've made it so that there's three different types of slopes, ones that you can walk up, ones that you have to jump up, but you can't walk up, and the ones that are way too steep that you'll just slide down to the bottom. By doing this, this also fixed my issue of having the player stick to walls. Another thing that I fixed this week was the waypoint on the anthill to work with the new third person view. And instead of having it pinned to the side of the screen like in the top down view, when you're looking away, uh, you just have to look at it directly now. I think this makes it look a little bit better. Um, I would also like to change the sprite of the waypoint at some point. I really like the waypoint that you see in Astroneer where it's kind of just straight up into the sky. So I'd like to change it to something like that. Now I didn't want to leave you only with bug fixes this week. I managed to texture and import the ladybug model. I first had to unwrap the UVs of my model and get them properly grouped. Basically what UV unwrapping is, it is preparing the model to receive a texture. If you've ever seen one of those terrifying face peels, yeah, that's what that is. Also, since my model wasn't going to have any sort of blending or seam transitions, so I just grouped each polygon together by the color I wanted them to be. Normally, you would want to neatly unwrap the UVs and precisely fit them based on the texture's resolution, but ain't nobody got time for that. Anyways, I imported it into Unity and set it up using the same entity controller script I wrote which was used to control the chest that you might have seen in previous devlogs. Now, I haven't made a walk animation for it yet, so it just kind of floats there. Once I make animations, it's going to look a whole lot better. So after I set up the ladybug, I put it into my terrain generation script just to see what it would look like having a few entities spawn around. Now, I'm going to have to make a specific spawning script so that the entities aren't based off my world generation seed, but this works for now. I also don't have a wandering mechanic yet, so the ladybugs are just gonna kinda stay there until I enter their range. And I would like to add some different alignment types for each entity, meaning I would like some entities to run away from you if you try to attack it, or maybe they'll fight back if you try to attack, and some that are just completely aggressive and will attack without being provoked. So for the ladybug, I'm thinking it will fight back only once it's provoked, so it's kind of a neutral creature. At the moment, you are able to kill the ladybugs, and if you do so, right now they just change textures and stop moving. But I'd like to change it so that they flip over onto their backs, and I'd also like to add a death animation. I'm sure you can tell, but you can't see the health levels yet, so I'd like to give them health bars by next week. They also don't have an attack, and I think I'll program the attack once I'm done animating it, so that I can only work with the attack colliders once rather than twice. As of right now, I have noticed a few bugs that I'm going to have to fix. Uh, right now, the ladybugs don't have any way of avoiding each other, so right now they just kind of mash together, and I've had a couple of them flat out just disappear, 
when they do so, so I'm gonna have to work on that. I'm thinking I'd like to have them circle around you as you get close to them if there's a lot of them. So if I implement that, it should fix the issue of having them collide with each other. Well, that's all I've done this week. I'm getting really close to being done all the essential movement scripts. Then I can move on to adding some of the more exciting things like items, resource veins, and crafting. Thank you so much for watching, and if you'd like to see what I'm up to before the weekly devlogs come out, you can follow my Instagram at underscore devmickey. I try to post every single time I make some sort of progress, and if you'd like to support my project and what I do, all you have to do is like this video and subscribe. As always, I'll try my best to respond to all your comments and suggestions, and thanks again for watching, and I'll see you later.